Have you ever wondered why the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers do not have an angled flight deck? A rather intriguing question, isn't it? Especially when you consider that most modern aircraft carriers do. It's a design decision that has raised many an eyebrow in naval circles and sparked more than a few debates among military enthusiasts. So let's dive in and explore. To answer this question, we first need to understand what an angled flight deck is and its history. The angled flight deck was a revolutionary innovation in the world of naval aviation. This sentence alone tells you the gravity of this particular invention. But where did it all start? Well, it was the British who first brought this concept to life. The angled flight deck, also known as the skewed deck, was introduced by the Royal Navy in the early 1950s. The idea came from the inventive mind of Rear Admiral Dennis Campbell, who was the director of naval construction at that time. He proposed the concept of an angled flight deck as a solution to a major problem in naval aviation, how to land and launch aircraft simultaneously without risking collisions on the deck. In the heat of battle, time is a precious commodity and fast-paced operations are a necessity. The angled deck allowed for this, increasing the efficiency of naval operations significantly. The benefits of Campbell's innovation were manifold. Firstly, it increased the safety of aircraft operations on carriers. If a pilot botched a landing, they could simply power up, take off again and circle round for another attempt, without fear of crashing into planes parked or launching at the other end of the deck. This was not possible with the straight deck design, where a missed approach could result in a catastrophic collision. Secondly, the angled flight deck allowed for larger and faster aircraft to be used on carriers. The extra runway space provided by the angle allowed for higher speed on takeoff and landing, making it possible to operate heavier jet aircraft. Thirdly, the angled deck design increased the operational tempo, allowing for simultaneous launch and recovery of aircraft. This was a significant advantage in the fast-paced world of naval warfare, where every second counts. The angled flight deck has certainly been a game-changer, but then why doesn't the Queen Elizabeth class have one? Well, that's a fascinating question that takes us into the heart of modern naval strategy and technology, and we'll delve into that in the next scene. The Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers present a different approach in their design. The Queen Elizabeth class carriers, named after Queen Elizabeth herself, are the largest warships ever constructed for the Royal Navy. Unlike the American Nimitz or Ford class carriers, they have chosen not to incorporate the angled flight deck. Instead, these carriers have a ski jump ramp at the end of the deck to assist in the launch of aircraft, a design feature that has been characteristic of British carriers since the 1980s. But why this departure from the angled deck norm? The answer lies in the type of aircraft these carriers are designed to accommodate, the F-35B Lightning II. This aircraft has a unique short takeoff and vertical landing, or stovel, capability. The ski jump design exploits this feature to its fullest, allowing the aircraft to take off with a heavier load, while using less fuel than it would need for a conventional takeoff. Now you might wonder why the Queen Elizabeth class didn't simply include both an angled deck and a ski jump. The key reason is space. An angled deck requires a large amount of real estate on the ship, space that can be used for other operational requirements. By choosing the ski jump design, these carriers can carry more aircraft and have more room for operations. Furthermore, the Queen Elizabeth class carriers have two islands instead of the usual one. The forward island is for ship control functions and the aft island for flying control. This separation allows for greater efficiency and safety in operations. It's also worth mentioning that an angled flight deck is primarily beneficial for arresting or stopping aircraft. The F-35B, however, can land vertically, negating the need for this feature. So the Queen Elizabeth class chose a different path. But what does this mean in terms of operational effectiveness? Design choices always have operational implications and the Queen Elizabeth class is no exception. The absence of an angled flight deck is a significant departure from the norm and it certainly has its implications. 
Firstly, the lack of an angled flight deck means that this class of carriers can't conduct simultaneous launch and recovery operations. In contrast, carriers with angled decks can launch aircraft from the front while retrieving others at the back. This design feature increases the operational tempo, allowing for faster sortie rates. On the other hand, the Queen Elizabeth class has been designed with a focus on efficient aircraft handling. The two islands on the deck, for instance, separate flight control and ship control, reducing the complexity of operations. The absence of an angled deck also allows for a simpler deck layout, which can be beneficial for crew safety and aircraft maintenance. Moreover, these carriers have been designed primarily for the F-35B, a short takeoff and vertical landing aircraft. This type of aircraft doesn't require a catapult for launch or arresting wires for recovery, which are the main reasons for having an angled deck in the first place. However, this design choice does limit the types of aircraft that can operate from these carriers. Without an angled deck, they can't accommodate conventional aircraft that require a longer takeoff run or a resting gear for landing. As we can see, the absence of an angled flight deck in the Queen Elizabeth class has its own set of implications. So, to sum up, the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers do not have an angled flight deck because of a distinctive blend of historical, operational and design factors. The angled flight deck a breakthrough of the mid-20th century revolutionized carrier operations by enabling simultaneous takeoffs and landings. However, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. The Queen Elizabeth class, with its two-island design, chose a different path. Their straight runway allows for larger aircraft operations and more efficient use of deck space. This design choice reflects the operational requirements of the Royal Navy and the vision for these carriers' roles in modern warfare. While an angled flight deck offers certain advantages, its absence in the Queen Elizabeth class isn't a design oversight. It's a well-considered trade-off, balancing the need for flexibility, operational efficiency and the evolving landscape of aerial warfare. Design choices are always a matter of trade-offs and in the case of the Queen Elizabeth class, the absence of an angled flight deck is a conscious decision based on a variety of factors.